Hey, sports card collectors and investors. I hope that everyone is having a great Thursday. We are making it to the end of the week, guys. We're just plowing through, so here we are. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. We have 300 videos on the channel, and we come out with daily content. So if you're looking for that consistent content on this stuff, that's us. Um, also, check the video description. I've got um, some of our more popular video links are in the description, as well as all of the social media feeds. So join us on um, Instagram and Facebook groups and Twitter, etc. I like to correspond with you all um, on those platforms as well. So please, please, please do that. Okay, guys. Today we are going to we're going to talk about how sports cards continue to go down. The prices continue to go down. Now, on the high end stuff, of course, you know we're talking about the LeBron RPAs and the Honus Wagner cards. They're at all time highs. So if you're looking at the top one percent of sports cards. Uh, those cards are not missing a beat. You know, you have the ultra wealthy that are buying those cards. I only have a handful of those. You know, those Honus Wagners. Uh, kidding, obviously. But you know, the majority of us are are in kind of buying and selling the regular stuff. You know, and so that's what I'm going to cover today. By no means at all is this channel a buy it now or sell it now, sell these cards now, buy these cards now type site. Strictly informational. Do with it what you will. Um, I picked cards that I do not own. I just thought they'd be interesting to talk about. And so we will go ahead and dig right into it. I wanted to look at players that you know, leading up to their seasons and also throughout their seasons have been you know, bought and sold high transaction type players as far as their cards go, excitement around these players and kind of where we sit now with some of these prices. So the first guy I'm gonna talk about is Dak Prescott, QB for the Cowboys. A lot of folks before the season started were really big, really high on Dak for obvious reasons. He's a young, great player, young, great QB in the NFL. The Cowboys just can't seem to get it together as an organization or as a team, but it, you can't really say that it's been really as much Dak's fault as anybody else's. He's played well. He's tough. Up until this season, he's been extremely durable. He is out right now with an injury. He's been out for the last couple of weeks, which has not certainly not helped his card prices. And so... This first card is a 2016 Select Concourse rookie card for him in a PSA 10. The pop is only 198, so there's not a, a bunch of these out there right now at this time. This is a card, if you look at where pricing went, where it's come and where it's gone, back in April, this card was a $27 to $30 card in a PSA 10 case. In June, it, it was June 1st, I have sales at $95. In September, sales as high as $240, and that's where I'm seeing kind of that height at is $240 in early September leading up to the season with all the excitement of the season starting. That somewhat makes sense. And then now we're looking at about a week ago, this card is down to about 60 bucks. So you look at the rise and the fall of some of these cards, and it just reminds us that, you know, especially um, in vintage as well, but certainly with modern, ultra modern players that are playing right now, you see how an injury, you see how a team just not performing well can have a very strong impact on prices. So, you know, there's a lot of talk in the hobby about sports cards that are going up. And of course, that's an exciting part of it. But we also have to just recognize that there are a lot of sports cards that, that go down um, over time. Historically, we've seen that with a lot of players that were supposed to be huge that just didn't pan out for whatever reason. And so I'm not saying that Dak is that guy, just more of a general statement that sports cards as a whole are very, very volatile as far as pricing goes. All right, next up, 2003 Topps LeBron James uh, Collection PSA 10. So kind of an alternative to the, you know, the Topps Chrome rookie card, for example. Um, really cool card. Pop is 137, so there's just, just not that many of them. This is a card that really, really surged over the last 12 months. If you look at 12 months ago, so, you know, Halloween 2019, this card was selling about $550, $600. August of this year, it got all the way up to $5,500, bucks, 10 x where it was in October of last year. And then now you've seen the prices come down on it. It's settled in at $2,450. This is just kind of an interesting one because it is a, you know, it is a LeBron James rookie card in that Topps family, and so you know, low pop for the most part. Um, just an interesting card, and like I said, kind of an alternative to the Topps Chrome that's gotten up to what ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. You know, this can be, I guess, kind of a more affordable option for those that are trying to get in on the LeBron market. Um, it's it's uh, amazing where these prices have gone. Okay, next I wanted to talk about a guy that. 
has accomplished a lot, but fell short this past season in the NBA. We're talking about Kawhi Leonard. His 2012 prism in a PSA 10, man, that thing, it's been up, it's been all over the place. It's kind of similar to Anthony Davis in a way, um, when the same year, that 2012 prism rookie. Now, the pop on this one is just under 1,000 right now for a PSA 10. It's at 994. In March, this card, so kind of leading up to the world going absolutely bonkers. This was about a $980 card, $950 to $1,000. In July, middle of July, going to kind of the end of July when the when they were just heading back into the bubble, um, to, you know, to play in the bubble, $2,800 to $3,000 card. So a huge jump leading up to the NBA going back to the bubble. And then in August, August 20th, I'm showing a high sale at over $6,000. This card went to $6,000. So between March and in August, this card went 6x. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And then if you look at now, just a few days ago, on November 2nd, this card sold for $1,800. So you see just kind of a, a massive swing for Kawhi Leonard. And I wonder if this does represent you know, a buying opportunity. If you're a believer in Kawhi Leonard, I mean, look, the guy's 29 years old. You know, As long as he stays healthy, probably has another five years in the league. Can he pull out another championship? Is this going to be an all-time great in you know Kawhi Leonard? You know we talk a lot about LeBron James, Kevin Durant, but Kawhi Leonard is he's quiet, quietly does quietly just very 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 good. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. He's not you know he's not the guy that's gonna you know be in all you know in 800 commercials and be the face of the NBA, but. There's no doubt in his skill. There's no doubt in him being able to lead a team. And we'll see what happens with, with the Clippers, too, next year. They might make some changes. Uh, but they have, they're have they a good team. But it's just the West is so, so deep. The West is so deep and tough to compete in anyway. Very, very curious to see what happens with Kawhi Leonard moving forward. But just wanted to notate just kind of how far that, that rookie card has come. And, you know, does it have... Does it have room to grow? Is it a buying opportunity? Or do you see it coming down even more? You know, because that would be another question is, you know, is this thing going to come down, you know, back down to levels that, that it was in March, closer to a thousand bucks? I'm, I'm curious to watch. All right, we're going to switch over to football now, guys. Let's talk about a card that's been really hot over the last six months. It is the 1998 Topps Chrome Peyton Manning rookie in a PSA 10. And the pop is 1,194 for this card. In January, this card was at $319, January 2020. This was a $300 card in May of this year. It's a $2,000 card. And then in August, it's a $5,500 card. There were sales as high as $5,500. Now, if we're looking a couple days ago, it's come back down to earth, but you do see it's kind of at a new, it's settled in at about $1,800. So again, you know, is this a card that gets a bounce as, you know, the card market comes back? Does it continue to fall? Peyton Manning, he's a top 10 QB of all time. There's no denying that. The guy was an absolute machine on the field. And he's, you know, still involved in football. He, you know, he's, he might be a broadcaster. He might be a coach. He's, he's a huge, huge name in the NFL and a huge, huge, you know, ambassador for the league still. And I don't see that really changing as time goes on. So what are your thoughts on the Peyton Manning rookie, the 98 Topps Chrome? He also has a really nice Bowman rookie card. Um, but he's a, he's an obvious, you know, Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, it's an interesting, interesting card. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. All right, last but certainly not least, uh, one of the hot young QBs in the NFL, we're talking about Kyler Murray, his Prism Base rookie card in a PSA 10. The pop report on this one for the 10 is 1,374. Back in March, this card is sitting at about $340, $350. In July, at the very end of July, it's a $699 card, $700 card. And then leading up, or actually a couple weeks after the season started, about a week after it looks like in September, got all the way up to eleven twenty-five, one thousand one hundred and twenty-five bucks. And just a couple days ago, it sold at four hundred and seventy-five dollars. One thing too, I would like to question the viewership, and I talk about this a lot, but I'm very closely watching PSA pop reports supply coming into the market. So, and I guess this is the reason why I talk about it. When I'm looking at prices from March, when I'm looking at prices from July, 
the obvious kind of thought is, oh, well, that was kind of the hot time. You know, that's when everyone had extra money to buy sports cards with, and they were buying sports cards, and it was a surge, etc. But what if, you know, for some of these cards, the pop report was a lot less? I mean, that's a thing to consider, too. Right now, it's, uh, it's showing 1,374, roughly. What was that pop in March? Was it 300? Was it 500? Was it 100? And so, you know, what was that pop in July? What was the pop in September when it went up to $1,100? Was it sheer demand? Or was there also an element of like a bunch of people got PSA 10s back and they and they hit the market? And, you know, so you had, you had some pricing. You know, how did that kind of work itself out? Because that's a moving target. Just as much as demand is a moving target for sports cards, the actual supply coming into the market is a massive, massive one. You know, that's why they kind of talk about like, you know, for new sets that come out, let's say it's, you know, Prism football that's going to come out in December. You know, a bunch of people are going to try to break those boxes. They're going to get the, you know, the the, the Nebulas or, or whatever the, you know, the big, you know, the snake skin uh, rookie card Joe Burrows. They're going to race those off to PSA, 10, or to PSA hoping to get a, a 10, 9 or 10 to then sell quickly because it's the first one hitting the market. So supply is a major, major conversation with this stuff. Um, and I'm just wanna, I'm curious to, you know, to hear from you all. I know, you know, we do talk about kind of where's pricing going? Is it going up, going down? Do you see it surging back as we get into, you know, the, you know, kind of as we get through the holidays, we have a new basketball season coming. We have some exciting new sets coming, whether it be Prism football, whether it be uh, Prism basketball in March. We've got basketball products coming out in that first quarter of next year. And how do you see it all playing out? I want to hear your thoughts. Please subscribe if you have not already. Please hit the like button. It helps us with the algorithm. And thank you again for joining us, guys. We will talk to you again later. Take care. Thank you.